Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing a bit of scouting. You know, showing you where things are in the world. So today I'm going to be showing you where the altars are, the mystic altars, the place to sort out your random enchants on your gear. I'm only going to be looking at Outland because we're currently in the Outland content, but I will mention where some of the vanilla locations are. So maybe if you feel like you, know, you don't want to go into Outland just yet, or you're still leveling, you can go sort out your enchants while you're leveling in vanilla content. Today, right, let's check here. So, realistically, all the enchanting in vanilla world is located by these little ancient enchanting altars things. So, one of them is outside Karazhan, so just technically around here, not there, but around Karazhan. In the master's cellar, it is there underneath the ground. So you go to Karazan. I'm just looking at the Karazan entrance. Take a left, go down the cellar. It should be down there. The next one is up in Dalaran Crater. So up here. It is in, on a little um, building. So you might have to do a bit of a jumping puzzle to get up there, but you you will see it. It's not particularly difficult to get to. But the next one, mainly the horde one, is in the top of the tower in Ajara, so you go to the flight point here or down here, you run down the path, there is a dude just sat there around the campfire, that is where that one is, talk to him, he sends you up, you run up the stairs, see a tower, you go to the top, here it is, it's very simple. Now this one's probably the easiest to find, you know, you've got these two guys here, you've got the PvP zone here, it's a bit further, it's over here, it's just out in the open, it's very simple to get to, I mean, admittedly, it's in Silithus, not the easiest place to get to, but if you're in Zilthus, it's very easy to get to. So that's that's the vanilla locations. There is no more that I can see. Now, obviously, you can get it from the shop. This one, for example, the Mystic Enchanting Altar. It sums it down, has a 30 minute cooldown, apparently, and it lasts for five minutes. So it's reasonably simple to get to. Go to any capital city, mainly Stormwind and Orgra or Shatrath. They should be up, or people should have them. If they do, they might put them down, but that's their own cooldown. Now, Outland doesn't actually have them on show, which is unfortunate. So as you can see, I am here in Hellfire. Right. So now I'm going to jump to the next altar location. Hopefully, you will know where it is. I will show you. I won't fly there. It takes a while. But get ready. Okay. So here I am. Here is the uh, the, the the first of the mystery mystic enchanting altars available in, on Outland. So the first thing you have to do is if you're coming from here, the way I did is I went up through you know, over the throne for an ethical Jaden, up over and no fatigue, you just appear here. So it's currently in this building in the Kirinvar village. So all you do is you go in here. If you can. You get a debuff so please watch it. Don't go in if you're uh, a healer by yourself. You do lose 50% damage, so you kind of have to at least deal damage to be able to get in here. So you walk up the stairs, the, 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 the long stairs. This is very similar to the Mage Tower in Jara location. So if you're wondering what this one, what that one looks like, this is very similar. So you walk up to the top, take a bit of time, and boom, here it is. So while I'm here, we'll have a look at some of the enchants. So the system is basically broken down into four categories now, not five like it used to. So you have uncommon, rare, epic, and legendary. So uncommon is essentially very basic minor changes. So it's things like hit chance, 2% damage, things like reduction in cooldowns, uh, threat reduction, threat increase, reduce, reducing cast time. They're very basic. Not everything gets one, not everything has one, not everything has all of them, some of them don't, some of them have different percentages. Like some some of the tauntings might be twelve. Some of the sort of more tanky tauntings, if I can find one. So if you can see there, so see if the judgment is only ten percent, that is twelve. Taunt that is five. You know, there is a varied percentage, they are reasonably well balanced for what they are. There are a lot of them, but they aren't mandatory in most specs. It's only very specific specs that would use any of these. 
So, you know, one button abilities, maybe ones that don't have many rares. That's the only reason why you'd use them. Now, rares are a little bit different. Rares are essentially empowering either one by having another thing, or uh, uh, things like that, or like that, or like that. Others are increasing the damage something does, you know, in, in, in general. Um, so like that one, maybe. They're all very this equals this at the moment, and then you might get stuff like this, or things that like this, or like that, or, you know, they're very basic. Most of them are based off small talents, or make improved specs, or, you know, every spec has a rare that is viable for their spec. Usually, in most cases, and if they don't, they usually use green. They're worth checking out for your build. The way you do that is, you know, you take your main skill. Mine here is Mongoose Bite. And there you go. There's the three. So currently I'm using this one, and these two both suck. So that's kind of the rule. It's very similar to Uncommon. But you don't really use any of these. And these are the general ones. You know, crit, you know, uh, crit damage... Threat reduction, threat increase, hit rating, mana reduction, quick damage bonus, hasty damage. It's very, it's very simple ideas. So that's that first one. And the way you get down is, you know, you just, you just jump. But make sure the mob is either alive or dead. You, know, you might have to kill the, the mob that was here. But other than that, you're pretty solid. And then when you walk out, you should lose the debuff. And there you go. Debuff has gone. And you can just fly away. Very simple, not particularly tricky, all sorted. Now on to the next one. Now the next one is so very close to Shatrath that I don't really need to skip that much. So it's in um, Taraka Forest. You know, it, it, it's it's pretty close to Shatrath. So if you have access to Shatrath, whether through a half stone or a teleport, it, it's very simple to get back here. It's not particularly hidden away or secretive, but it, it it does require flying, which I think is a bit of a problem it has. There's not a particularly easy way to get up unflown, if that makes sense. But outside of that, if you have flying, which doesn't cost a huge amount of gold, but can, it's worth um, looking at it. So it's just down here. So if I look on the map, it's just here, facing kind of at the spirit tower, and then looking down. So if you can see that, you know I'm juddering a bit. There we go. And you fly into this little crevice here. There is usually a mob here, but I think this guy here has killed it for us, so that's very thankful. Thank you, my dude. The next set is epics. Now, epics are essentially in the most basic of ways, spec defining. So a lot of them either create the spec's base mechanic outside of the legendary, obviously the legendary is another thing. So for example, mine is charged up. So as you saw from my build video, which I will link you know, in a card or down below as just on my channel, is essentially spec defining. That is my spec. Some others aren't so. You know, some are very basic, some don't really add much, some are quite um, unique. Some add mechanics to your spec to get them to work even better. But again, it, it, it mainly depends on the sort of spec you're going for. Some add to the spec and some make the spec. But it very much depends on the type of spec you're going. So for example, if I type in, again, my main ability, Mongoose Bite, I get these five choices. Now, depending on what I'm using in my spec, some might be really good. So if I'm rogue-based, I might go wild aggression. If I'm using wing clip, I might go shavagery. If I'm using, you know, kill command and a pet, it might be worth getting fetch the bones. Now, guerrilla tactics, again, would be worth it in general if I'm doing uh, what I'm doing. Same with charged up. So there's there's different types of epics, you know, there's, there's different versions that are out there. Now, some are genuinely... You know, stance based, so add a stance but take away an armor. So, like, uh, Molten Mine takes away Molten Armor and gives you an additional benefit, but means you can't go into things like Moonkin Form, or Tree Form, or Defensive Stance, or Battle Stance, or Zerk Stance, or Bear Form, or Cat Form, or Tree Form, 
or Shadow Form. There are some out there. Realistically, Multimind is probably one of the better ones. And then you get some that are, you know, similar in the sense that, you know, it is a form, but do a generic basis. You know, some might be very basic, some might be more unique, some might be a little bit weird. There are some that are generally really important to use, things like this, or some that are questionable, like Jab Cross now, with the changes to tanking. Some others are a bit weird, some of them, you know, try and mix different specs together, different abilities, some just add to the spec, like Relentless Laceration. And then there is some that just give flat damage, if I can find one, there are a lot of these, things like this, you know, where they, they you gain, you cast a type of spell, a different school of, school of ability or spell gets a cost reduction or a damage increase, so that's the cost reduction one, it's very similar, just the arcane, the physical and the name changes. The rest pretty much stays the same. Obviously you get more unique ones, if I can find one that would be fantastic, you know, some uh, unique to a certain class, some are incredibly weird, you know, some, some buffer specs, some nerf specs, some changes specs, some tweak specs, you know, things like that as well. They're not as good as they used to be, but they, st they still exist. You know, you, you with REs you have to look, delve into them more, rather than just pick whatever someone says to pick. It's worth looking at them regularly and seeing if anything improves. You know, if anything changes your spec. And as I say, this is the mob. Usually quite easy to kill. A few, a few attacks, a few skills. Now, onto the next one. Onto the final one, actually. So, I have come to Negran. And as you can see, I'm around the uh, Oshigun. So at the moment, I'm just flying around looking for a cave entrance. Now, now this cave entrance is very, very important. Here it is. So this is the most difficult one to get to, which is why it's probably never used. So if you're doing PvP, or you have a high-risk on, this is probably the better one to go to. It's, it's, you know, it's very secretive and hidden away. And you're not likely to get caught out in PvP. Now, there are some mobs here that you have to kill. There's quite a few. So it's also quite good if you're looking for... You know, a little bit of extra gold while you're hunting, or changing your REs. As long as your spec works and it's not hindered in any way. So this might take a while. There's a lot of these mobs everywhere. So I'm pretty sure you can go all the way around. You know, did they drop some good loot? You know, some, some lots of shadow, some gear to sell, food, cloth. Now you come to the end of this hallway. There's obviously a hostile chest there, so let's have a look inside this chest while I'm here. Ooh, nice. Now what you can do is you go down here, and you see these cultists. And there's the altar. You will have to kill these guys a little bit too often. They do seem to spawn faster than expected sometimes, so it's, it's worth not being stood around here too long. Now, on to Legendary Ares, the final section of this video. Legendary Ares are the big spec. So, the way the current Ares system works is your spec is your Legendary Ares. Epics are more spec defining and spec changing, spec adjusting and tweaking, kind of, or at least job and duty that they do. They won't make your spec, but they will change how your spec functions compared to others if they pick a different epic. No epics, no two epics are the same, basically. Whereas legendaries, no legendary is the same, and no spec using these legendaries usually is the same. Obviously, unless you traded specs and you've made no changes. So some are tanky, some are heals, some are DPS, some are caster ranged, some are ranged, like hunters, some are generic and used in all these different types of specs, you know, like tools of war can be used as a physical melee, can be used as a physical hunter, <laughs> Can occasionally be used as a bear tank or you know a, a two-hand tank occasionally for extra damage. Not usually. There is these are all your spec. So it's worth making sure that if you have your spec, you get your legendary RE. Now they try release some of these regularly enough to make the game interesting and change how the game works, or at least add to the customization of every character. Some basically take rob jobs of other talents and things. Or are 
pretty much stay temporarily disabled, but we've never really ex been able to look at it and experience it, even if they look really cool, which is what Blood Venom looks like. It's one of the ones I've wanted to mess around with for a while, but never had the opportunity because it's been disabled. These, these are all, you know, some of them are memes, the occasional one. Some are strong, some are bad, some are unique, some are mixing the two together, you know, like warrior and mage, some are, you know, random druid stuff. There, there, is a, there is a drastic choice in these legendary IREs, and I have the majority of them. You know, some are very basic, so it's one word sentences, some are multiple paragraphs. It's worth picking a skill first and then picking a legendary that fits. So for example, if I'm going Mongoose Bite, there's those three and then that allows me to pick. Or if I'm going Frostbolt, I can then pick one of these because, for example, all, some of these are casters, some of these are melee, some of these are spell hybrids, some of them aren't, some of them, you know. There's, there's multiple different versions, some of them are even healers. There, there is that choice and range to pick from. So it's worth having a look through if you're a new player or if you're looking for a new spec. If you're a vet, you can always try and correct me in the comments. That's always helpful, you know, start a discussion rather than just berating people endlessly. But anyway, guys, that's it in total for, you know, the jobs of the REs and the locations. Now, obviously, there is the Mystic Orbs, the Mystic Runes, the Mystic Extracts, the rolling system, the... the Limitations you see on the screen, you know, the legendary enchants, the epic enchants. That stuff will be done in another video or by someone else, or you can watch some of my old videos, they're very similar. But that's pretty much it for this video, guys. That's me done. Thanks for watching. Remember to hit like, subscribe, and share the video, and I'll see you another time. Goodbye. <laughs>